Hello, my fellow creator. My name is Sansi. Welcome to my channel. This is the best place for creative people who want to live better. Today, I'm doing another jewelry product photography shoot at home using my iPhone 12. In fact, these are all of the photos that I will take today, and I don't know what you're looking at right now because I haven't taken those pictures yet. But in this video, I'm going to walk you through the whole process and I'm going to show you behind the scenes of creating product photos at home with an iPhone to hopefully inspire you to start building your creative career now using whatever you already have. I just want all of my fellow creators to live a life of their dreams and start designing it right now from this point in your life. So here are all the jewelry pieces that I'm going to take photos of today. This is a bracelet from the Sticky Sis Club. I also have these earrings from them. Three rings from the brand Atrua, as well as these twisty earrings from them. And this pair from Monk and Anna. I'm gonna set my photo studio right here, just outside of my house. I have my trusty papers from the craft store. For the first image, I'm thinking to use this or that color. This one is more yellow. I think it will fit in the vibe really nicely. I'm gonna use this one. I'm just gonna tape it to the wall like that to create an infinity background. These earrings have little lemons and they have different texture on both sides. So I wanna show that on my photo. Whenever I'm coming up with ideas for photos, I ask myself what's unique about this product and what's important to highlight. This earring placement already looks good, by the way. I might just take a minimalistic photo, just like with this beautiful shadow on the side. Let me quickly do that before I make any other arrangements. I don't really like the porous texture of this background material, so I might as well use this concrete prop from Beton Ton and place the earrings here. I'm just making sure that the shadows are quite separated and they're not interfering with each other. Before taking any photos with my iPhone, I always make sure to clean the camera. And if I just wipe it on my sweater or on my skirt, it's not gonna work. It's only the special fabrics that come with glasses or you can buy specialized wipes with alcohol for glasses as well. I can also play with the shadow a little bit and rotate this tray just the way I like it. This was good. As usual, I'm zooming to 1.3. This is important to reduce the lens distortion. And then I'm gonna come up close and take photos from different angles. When I'm taking photos from the top, iPhone creates this little cross that I need to align to make sure that I'm in the right position. Okay, the first photo is done. Let's move on to the next one. Now for props, I'm gonna bring some pears and flowers. Somehow I need to make sure that nothing is flying away. And I'm going to set it up in a nice artistic still life composition. The idea is to have one pair up like that and another one laying down. And here I might stick in the earrings and here I will place the bracelet. I think this pink color nicely complements the pink color of this accessory right here. And you see this line? I think I'm going to align the bracelet on it and kind of tape it at the back to hold it in place with the painter's tape. The conditions to take photos today are far from ideal. The sun is always hiding behind the clouds and then coming back again. And the wind is really strong, so everything is flying away. But, you know, this is what I'm kind of preaching. Create with what you have. There will never be ideal conditions. You just gotta make things work the way they are. iPhone also has this level feature now, so whenever I'm trying to take a photo straight, it will create the line that I will need to match, and that's how I know that it's perfectly straight. I can also turn my iPhone upside down for a more powerful look. <laughs> no, mister, you're going back there. Hi, baby. Are you helping? You're my little inspiration. Yes, yes. No, no, don't, don't break it, babe. All right, all right, I think I got it. For my next photo, I'm gonna use this brown piece of paper. I'm planning to hang it on the wall, overhang it a little bit, and then stick my brown earrings right here and take a photo. But first, I actually want to rip the edge of this paper. Oops, I kinda like that it's uneven. Okay, I'm gonna go with this. Okay, here are the earrings that I want to photograph. As you can see, they're also brown, kind of match this color. 
I'm going for a monochrome look here. Now I'm just piercing the paper with the earrings, not too close, not too far away. For this photo, I wanna make sure I have the shadow captured, that I can see well these earrings. Might need to take a photo from the side, actually. For this photo, I just wanted to make sure that you can see all of the colors in these earrings. So here is the final photo. Oh well, it's gotten really cloudy. I'm gonna have to continue shooting this tomorrow. First thing in the morning, I'm gonna wake up and I'm gonna jump onto creating more photos. Hopefully it's not gonna be as windy as today because this is honestly so irritating sometimes. Okay, I'll see you, bye. Hello, my fellow creator. It's the next day. It's very sunny, it's very windy again, and I am ready to shoot more jewelry photos today. I was just checking what I created yesterday on my computer, editing the photos, and I used three different backgrounds. This brown paper, this yellowy beige material, and a concrete tray from Beton Fiton. So today I'm gonna to continue using these three in different configurations to create the same style and vibe for this mini series of jewelry photos. I already laid out three different rings on the tray because I wanna capture them together. That's first on the list. Let's just get started with it. Right now I'm just going to use some transparent scotch tape to tape my rings to the tray and later I will photoshop it, but it will be almost invisible. I'm going to try to incorporate this brown background in the photo as well, just to keep the theme consistent. I wanted to just like peek through a little bit. And now I just want to choose the best kind of shadow. I don't like that because this ring is not showing the spaces in between. I think I'm gonna try to capture that first. I'm gonna move all of my rings closer to the edge of the tray so that I can still integrate the brown background and it wouldn't look too overwhelming. Okay, you see how different this is right now? It's a bit closer here, so I'm gonna take photo now. When taking photos of gold, I always need to make sure that the gold does not reflect too much of the dark surfaces around it. Shooting next to the white wall really helps with that because the gold appears as gold and not as like something dull and gray. I took a lot of photos from many different angles and I rotated the tray quite a bit until I captured enough shots to choose from. And this is the result. Okay, check this out. I have this super simple setup. I'm going to tape this earring so they stay upright, or maybe like one standing, one laying down. I have this smaller tray. Like if I turn it around, it has this edge, but I wanna use it without the edge right now. And I'm still using the brown background to correlate with my theme. I have this mirror, this tiny little mirror. Hello. And I'm going to put a sunny bunny on it and capture it like that. So let me try it. All right, I think one of them is gonna be standing like that and another one laying down to create two different shadows. I turned my phone upside down for a better angle and just played with the sunbeam until I was happy with how the shadows looked like. And here is the final photo. I'm setting up my next scene right here. For the background, I'm gonna go for this yellowy beige color and I'm gonna use this concrete podium. It has beautiful texture and I'm thinking to take a photo of a bracelet on it. So it's going to be a very minimalistic composition, but I think a very powerful one. All I really needed to do for this photo is to make sure that the flower is lit up and it doesn't appear dull or dark. So all of the photos are taken and edited and right now I'm ready to give you some comments for each of the photos in this mini jewelry photo series. The first photo is the photo of the earrings from the Sticky Sis Club and I think three elements make this photo interesting. The first one is the background. Instead of using something very plain and textureless, I am using a concrete tray from Beton Fton and I really like that it doesn't grab a lot of attention and at the same time, 
it creates some additional interest. The second element that makes this photo really interesting is the shadow. I made it a part of the photo. If the shadow was very soft, it wouldn't be such a statement. The third element that makes this photo really interesting is the fact that I placed them in such a way so you can see two different textures on both sides. So I really wanted to highlight that feature of this Sticky Seuss earrings. The second photo is of the same earrings and a bracelet from them. This brand says, on the inside of their packaging. This is the club to celebrate a bubbly life full of sunbeams and happy colors and I decided to add some happy colors through the colors of pears. Overall, just think it's a very cute picture that will attract people's attention on social media because it's not something you see every day. The next photo is of these earrings from Monk and Anna. They are brown, they have this organic shape to them. So I used a brown paper for my background and I created an organic edge by ripping that paper. Let's move on. Photo number four is featuring three different golden rings and I think it's a very great idea to take photos of a few pieces when they're complementing each other and when they can be styled together and sold together as an ensemble. Again, I'm using shadows to add interest to my photo, a shadow created by the edge of this tray. It kind of hugs the whole composition. The next photo is featuring these twisty earrings from a brand Atrua. This photo only works thanks to the sunny bunny that I created. If everything was in the light, it wouldn't produce the same impact. But because there is this light beam, your eyes are just drawn to the earrings and you don't wanna look anywhere else and you don't need to because the rest is just a simple complementary background. For this last photo, I just really wanted to give another moment to this bracelet to shine through on its own. And I wanted to highlight how intricate it is. I kept the background really simple because I placed it on a textured prop. It just creates contrast with the background and that's how the photo looks more interesting. And that's it. I hope this video inspired some creative ideas in you and I hope you saw how much is actually possible with a little bit of creativity and an iPhone 12. If you have any questions or comments or ideas for my future videos, let me know in the comments down below. Also, give this video a thumbs up. This is the least you can do to support me on my YouTube journey. Also, if you wanna see other videos about jewelry product photography at home, I have a bunch of them already on my channel, so check them out. I'll see you in my next video. Peace.